All right, welcome to episode two of the DIY Amplifier project. And the amplifier modules have arrived. Here's one. Um, the goals for today are pretty straightforward. We're going to solder the components onto the PCB and then power up and test the amplifier modules and hopefully they'll sound good. Uh, okay, so given that we have a circuit construction job, uh, maybe we can do one of those cool soldering montages. Hmm. All right, so before we test the amplifier modules, uh, there is something very important I need to cover. Um, and this was pointed out by a viewer, Matthias, uh, who watched episode one and pointed out uh, an important mistake that I made in wiring the switch that switches the mains power uh, to the circuit. And uh, I promised you I would make some dumb mistakes and this was a very dumb mistake. Um, so let's talk about uh, SPDT, single pole dual throw switch wiring. So the kind of uh, toggle switches I'm using uh, are these guys uh, for turning the mains voltage on and off to power the amplifier circuit. And you know, there's essentially two positions uh, that you can move the lever into. And so if we label the three terminals of the switch, one, two, and three, um, when the toggle switch, when the lever is going up, it's going to connect pins two and three, terminals two and three electrically. And if the lever is going down, it's going to connect terminals one and two uh, together electrically. And then uh, in each position, one of the pins is essentially uh, isolated and not uh, connected to anything. Um, and there are two ways that you could use an SPDT switch to switch mains current or switch mains voltage to your circuit. Uh, option one uh, is to take the terminal two, uh, the, the center terminal, so in each of these diagrams, uh, this is terminal two, uh, we could have the live wire of the AC voltage. Uh, that is the voltage that is changing relative to neutral. Neutral is essentially sort of a common potential. Um, you can, uh, in theory, don't ever do this, but in theory, you could touch a neutral wire. Um, and because the voltage is not varying on the neutral wire, it shouldn't hurt you. But don't ever touch... Uh, a wire that you suspect is connected to mains voltage, that is an extremely bad idea. 
So uh, one option is to take terminal two, uh, connect that to live, and then if the lever is in the right position, that uh, connects the live mains voltage to uh, either one or three, uh, terminals one or three of the switch that then goes to your circuit. Um, that's option one. Option two uh, is to take the live terminal, connect it to either one or three, and then when the toggle is in the right position, uh, the mains voltage, the live mains voltage, will go out on terminal two to the circuit. So, um, the these options will both work. However, option one is not a good option. It is not the safe option. And uh, the reason is, uh, as Matthias pointed out, uh, when your toggle is in the off position, so if we move this toggle so that it was connecting uh, the live voltage to, to this terminal, now this terminal is being energized relative to the potential of neutral and so if this is a bare terminal, as it was in video one, um, then the live is now electrically present on this bare terminal. And if you touched it, you could get hurt. So that, that is definitely a safety concern. So one way uh, you could mitigate that safety concern would be to uh, heat shrink the uh, this terminal to make sure if somebody touches it, uh, they would be insulated. But that's uh, this is not the option you want to use. Uh, the option you want to use is option two. Uh, this is the uh, considerably safer option. And so the idea is uh, when the uh, when the toggle is in the off position. So when we connect, uh, it, when we remove the connection from uh, this terminal and move the switch up so that these two terminals are connected. Uh, now, this sort of um, unused terminal uh, in the circuit, rather than being connected to the, the, the live um, side of the AC voltage, now is just connected to the rest of the circuit. And presumably, uh, the circuit is not energized uh, when the switch is in the off position or that there aren't any dangerous voltages that would appear here in the absence of being uh, electrically connected to the, the mains voltage. So uh, this is not to say that it's necessarily a good idea to touch this, uh, this terminal um, when the switch is in the off position. And uh, I have uh, I have rewired my switch so that I'm using now option two. And I also put heat shrink uh, on this terminal of the switch just you know because you can't be too careful uh, with, with mains voltage. So again, thank you to Matthias for uh, pointing that out. Uh, okay, let's test some amplifier modules. All right, so here is our wiring diagram showing how we're going to connect the audio input into the input of the LM1875 modules. And uh, the main thing that we need to think about is how we are going to implement the volume control. So a volume control is essentially just a potentiometer that takes one of the input audio signals. So here's the left channel signal. And depending on how you turn the knob of the potentiometer, that controls where, where the wiper is and essentially controls uh, where the wiper is in effectively a voltage divider between the audio input and the audio ground. So by manipulating where the wiper is, you can uh, attenuate the signal to some arbitrary degree. So uh, make sure that you use um, audio potentiometers and not linear potentiometers for a volume control. So uh, sound output, uh, basically the power needs to increase exponentially in order to perceive a linear rise in uh, perceived volume. So these audio potentiometers essentially have, uh, are essentially, uh, essentially used in exponential scale or a log scale, depending on how you look at it. Uh, another thing to note here is that I've shown the left and right volume potentiometers as separate potentiometers, but what you really want in practice is to have a single stereo potentiometer that's basically just two audio potentiometers with a common shaft so that you can adjust uh, both wipers at the same time. Um, and I do not yet actually have one, so when I do the test, what you'll see is two uh, just basically regular audio potentiometers that will allow me to adjust the left and right volume uh, independently. Um, okay, so I think we are ready to wire this up and actually test the amplifier. All right, here is our test setup. Uh, I actually have completed quite a bit of the enclosure. It's basically just pieces of scrap plywood 
cut up and screwed into place with wood screws and it's definitely kind of rough and ready but I think it fits the DIY aesthetic uh, of this project so I'll, I'll talk about the enclosure in more detail in the next video but what we really want to do now uh, is test out the amplifier module so basically uh, the audio input comes into a 3.5 millimeter basically headphone jack in the back uh, that is then conveyed through um, a cut up piece of a headphone cable. It's basically uh, a shielded three conductor audio cable, uh, which is uh, a, a good way to do your sort of internal audio signal routing uh, inside the enclosure to avoid picking up uh, interference or 60 hertz hum uh, from other components. Um, right, right, so this is the audio input coming in. Right now, all the wiring is just done temporarily on this terminal strip. Here are my audio potentiometers for the left and right volume controls. And then the input signals go to the LM1875 modules here. Uh, I have wired them for power from our power supply board. Uh, the positive and negative voltage rails are set at 14, at plus 14 and minus 14. Um, and then the speaker outputs from the LM1875 devices go onto this uh, uh, speaker jack connector back here. Um, and the actual speakers are these uh, realistic uh, Minimus 7 speakers. So if you were a fan of the Radio Shack catalog in the late 70s or early 80s, you probably remember these. These are rather nice speakers. They're die cast metal and they're like super heavy but uh, apparently they're fairly well regarded in terms of their sound quality. I'm not an audiophile, so I can't tell you how accurate that is, but they definitely sound good to me and they look cool, which is the main thing. Uh, okay, so let's power up here. Uh, I have some royalty-free, copyright-free music queued up on my music player here, so let's, uh, let's play. Right now the volume is all the way down, so let's turn up the left channel. and turn up the right channel and right now the volume on the music player is fairly low so we'll turn that up so you'll have to take my word for it that this is quite loud and the sound quality is excellent. I am really, really pleased with how this sounds. All right, I'm going to pause. And there is essentially no 60 hertz hum audible from these speakers. So the, uh, the output of these LM1875 modules is very clean. So I am thrilled with how well this is working. It sounds excellent just light years beyond my crappy computer speakers that I was using before. So this is a big, big thumbs up. I'm, I'm very pleased. All right, so the good news is the amplifier works really well. Uh, both the power and the sound quality uh, easily exceed my expectations. I'm very pleased. So what we're going to do in the next and final video uh, is I will go over the physical construction and just talk about some of the things that you might need to think about if you are planning to build something similar. Uh, I will wire up the actual stereo volume control and put on a front panel. Uh, I'm just using pieces of clear acrylic for the front panel um, and the back panel for that matter. And I'm thinking of maybe doing some interior LED lighting since the front panel is clear. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. So, okay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.